what's going on everybody happy thursday out there hope we're all having a pretty good end to the week right now and right now things are relatively quiet for most americans out there as we're kind of stuck in between a couple storm systems here so uh, you know don't get too used to the nice weather but definitely get out there and enjoy it because things are going to go downhill very quickly as we go into our thanksgiving week and likely that's going to start a pattern of very active weather with multiple storm tracks across the eastern half of the country going into the end of november and into the start of december December. So again, definitely want you to stay tuned. So a good way to do that is by making sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit that bell as well to get notifications on, excuse me, on every time I upload a video, assuming I can get through this one at least. Um, and also like the video if you like it and comment, let me know where you're watching from out there as it really helps me kind of make these forecasts and uh, kind of gear these videos towards my audience. So definitely uh, like to help you guys out as much as I can because at the end of the day, you're the one helping me by uh, taking time out of your day to even watch this in the first place. So again, super grateful for all of you for joining me today. Uh, now with all of that kind of um, blah blahing out of the way here at the beginning, let's go ahead and jump into that forecast because again, there's a lot that we need to discuss as we kind of really uh, crank up and go into our Thanksgiving time frame. So uh, right now looking at current satellite imagery out there, uh, again, we're seeing overall pretty quiet conditions over the mainland. Now, off our coast to the south, a little bit of a different story. You uh, notice this very big spin over the Gulf of Mexico currently. Now, that um, is just kind of one area. There's another area that you folks in Florida last night definitely felt as this was moving on through. Uh, we have another area of spin just off the uh, kind of east coast there of Miami and the Fort Lauderdale area. This moved through the Keys last night, and we had wind gusts getting up into the 80 and 90 mile an hour range overnight. So uh, this thing really kind of, I don't want to say came up out of the blue, but definitely got much stronger than I think a lot of meteorologists were probably expecting it to. And I'm sure a lot of you are also wondering, you know, why didn't this quite get a tropical name? Well, uh, kind of a lot of meteorology behind that, but long story short, it just didn't quite have those characteristics uh, in terms of how warm court it was. We had some cold and dry air kind of wrapping around one side of it. So although it was very impressive and strong, that isn't how we categorize tropical systems. Uh, it's more off of their overall structure. And this guy just didn't quite meet that criteria but nonetheless as you saw those impacts still were felt by many people now, uh, we are seeing some clouds throughout the southeast in the Mississippi River Valley due to these two storm systems kind of spinning away, but if you're up in the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, Ohio River Valley, outside of maybe some high-level cirrus and stratus clouds, overall pretty nice out there for a lot of folks on this Thursday. Now, in terms of radar imagery, again, nice for a lot of people. We are seeing some rain down into Florida, again, where you're kind of sandwiched in between those two storms and that rainfall even working up towards Savannah and the Charleston area of South Carolina, but again, outside of that, really dry for a lot of folks folks for um, much of us here east of the Rocky Mountains are seeing some rain out here in the plains as that is the beginning of uh, kind of this cold front that is going to begin working on through the country and we'll take a look at that here in our next map that I'm pulling up right now. Alright, so I'm going to quickly move myself out of the way here just so we can see uh, all folks on the map here and we're not just uh, having to look at my face and uh, everyone else. Uh, so again, right now things, you know, as we've looked at with radar, relatively quiet outside of the southeast. As we move this ahead into time, uh, that picture is going to change going into our Friday afternoon uh, and really by the time you're waking up tomorrow morning, you'll notice a pretty uh, big expansive area of some rainfall beginning to pick up here for a lot of folks as this cold front is going to begin to swing on through. So uh, if you're waking up tomorrow in a place like Indianapolis, Chicago, Detroit, uh, down towards St. Louis, seeing some rain showers working on through, uh, those won't last too long. And um, as those move out through the day, expect clearer, drier, and cooler temperatures to funnel in behind this rainfall. By the time we're getting into rush hour tomorrow evening, that front making it into the Ohio River Valley from uh, Louisville, Kentucky, back down towards Little Rock and all the way up towards the Northeast uh, through Erie, Pennsylvania, Syracuse, up into Vermont, much of Pennsylvania, seeing that precipitation shield move on through as well before eventually going into overnight uh, uh, Friday and into the early morning hours of Saturday. This front finally makes it into the I-95 corridor and we're seeing some of that rain here unfold and maybe even some snow uh, for you folks in the higher elevations of Maine. Uh, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, they're kind of where we're getting scraped by just enough cold air and moisture at the same time. But right now, it doesn't look like a blockbuster snowstorm, but could definitely get some lake of X snow showers on the back end of that going into our overnight Saturday and into Sunday. 
All right, so another thing I do want to mention while we're on this map here is, uh, I know I'm calling this a cold front, and it definitely is, but it won't quite be a cold front for everybody. Uh, what I want you to kind of notice on our map here, and I'm going to try my best to highlight these, look at these isobars, these kind of blue isobars you see showing up here, and eventually they turn into red isobars. Uh, what this helps tell me is how cold is the air, or how um, kind of dense is the atmosphere getting due to that cold air, and you'll notice most of these blue lines stay pretty far north, and that's really whenever we kind of get into that uh, more cold air or that 540 millibar line you'll notice here uh, as I move this ahead in a time that really kind of just peaks on through uh, the Midwest and into the Northeast but areas south of there into the Southeast uh, the deep south as a whole these isobars aren't really quite troughing all that much or uh, you're not seeing kind of that bendy smiley face uh, that you're seeing up in the northeast so i really think the coolest of these temperatures at least with this cold front are really going to impact much of the northern tier of the country and not so much the southern tier however uh, this will be a good kind of clearing up the atmosphere so uh, temperatures will drop a little bit dew points will drop that'll definitely help to get those overnight lows closer down uh, towards you know average to below average for this time of the year but really the coldest of the air is really going, excuse me, to stay up into the northeast. Alrighty, so in terms of rainfall with uh, this uh, kind of cold front moving on through, again, not too much. And oops, sorry, kind of just moved the whole map there. I meant to grab my um, self here. Uh, anyway, um, again, rainfall with this, not a whole lot, maybe upwards of an inch here into the northeast in the Ohio River Valley where we see the most rain. But as for most folks, uh, really not all that much rain falling with this storm system as we move uh, into this weekend. Alrighty, so uh, now that we've talked about that, let's go ahead and talk about what I'm sure a lot of you are probably a little more curious about hearing, and that is that Thanksgiving week forecast. And again, things are looking quite active as we go into that Thanksgiving time period. And unfortunately, uh, this is a very busy kind of travel season for a lot of folks. Uh, so we really need to try to break this down for you as, uh, you know, again, a very active time next week. So again, right now we're seeing a lot of kind of ridging in the eastern half of the country and that's why we're seeing just uh, really these currently kind of above average temperatures for a lot of folks here east of the Rockies. That is due to these kind of, um, you know, isobar stretching upward into Canada here, bringing in that warmer air from the Gulf of Mexico. As we move this ahead in time, though, uh, that story is going to change rather quickly. So going into this weekend, here's that first cold front that we just looked at. Again, you'll notice these isobars kind of uh, kinking downward, if you will, and kind of the smiley face shape. Uh, that indicated to me that cold air now coming down out of Canada as we go into this weekend. But the real story is going into next week. Look at this big area of blue kind of showing up uh, back out into the Great Plains here, starting into our... Uh, overnight Sunday into Monday and as we move this ahead into time into next week that big area of blue continues to expand continues to strengthen and by the time we're going into Tuesday Wednesday look at this troughing getting all the way down into the Gulf of Mexico that tells me uh, we're seeing plenty of uh, below average temperatures you know working their way down and with that we're seeing a lot of divergence as that wind kind of exits that trough it has to spread out and with that we get plenty of rising motion at the surface and with that cyclogenic low pressure and precipitation likely to form going into the middle part of next week and with such a strong trough here uh, you can expect plenty of that low pressure to begin to form and plenty of precipitation uh, before eventually we go into Thanksgiving Day itself and the map kind of clears out a little bit and we potentially could get another round or a continuation of this active pattern behind that with another trough swinging out of the Rockies going into Thanksgiving weekend so Again, definitely positive on a very big storm coming next week. And again, that pattern could continue here into uh, later parts of the um, year going into kind of the end of November. Alrighty, so again, that was kind of the fancy meteorology map. Let me show you a good old-fashioned kind of radar and what this could look like next week with our latest GFS model. I'm going to go ahead and move this ahead in time a little bit, and um, you'll notice kind of uh, as we bring this going into later next week, or excuse me, into this weekend, here's that cold front moving on through the northeast and the mid-Atlantic this weekend. That moves on through by the time we get into Sunday, and we've already talked about that. We get a little bit of a lull in between before here comes that next storm system beginning to crank up back out towards Oklahoma and Texas going into Sunday afternoon and into our Monday. So uh, again, moving this ahead further into time, you'll notice the slow pressure continuing to strengthen. By the time we get into Tuesday afternoon, uh, beginning to work on through the Ohio River Valley and bringing with it the chance for potentially some storms on the south side of it and some snow on the north side from the Great Lakes into the interior northeast. So um, as we go into Tuesday, this is when things are going to get a really, I think, the most active out of this 
storm system's life. You'll notice here it is likely centered somewhere over the Ohio River Valley or Great Lakes. We have high pressure sitting over the northeast, so uh, these two are going to kind of work in tandem. That high pressure is supplying cold air into the northeast, and this low pressure is supplying plenty of moisture that's going to ride up and over that cold air. We could see a bit of an icy and wintry mess going into next Tuesday and Wednesday, and you'll notice that here on the latest GFS model, a big mixed bag of uh, just kind of a wintry mess in general through sections of the northeast. Now, again, it is only November, so I don't expect a blockbuster kind of winter storm out of this, but some folks really could get affected with some big time travel troubles uh, as this cold air and warm air kind of clash. So Again, areas kind of south into the mid-Atlantic, the southeast. Uh, biggest threat here is going to be some gusty winds, some rainfall, maybe some severe weather. We'll have to uh, kind of look a little more in-depth at that as we get a little bit closer, and I'll even touch on it a little bit more here later on in this video. But as for the winter weather threat, the interior northeast, I think, has the best shot, at least at the onset of this storm. And then by the time it's moving away, uh, we could get some really impressive lake effect snow. And you'll notice, look at these blue lines I was talking about earlier, uh, much stronger here with this storm compared to this weekend storm system and getting much further south in time for our Thanksgiving afternoon. And again, that could definitely lead to, um, you know, plenty of uh, disorganized weather and a lot of travel problems as we go through this week. The good news though is I think by the time we hit Thanksgiving Day itself, uh, you'll notice here on this map things look much quieter outside of cooler temperatures behind that front and some pretty impressive lake effect snow ongoing. I think most of us will begin to clear out, but at that point we need to watch out for, again, do we get another trough with another storm system back towards the Rockies and maybe we even get another low pressure system to develop in the Gulf. All these are big question marks that we will answer as we get closer to this event, but uh, again, nonetheless looks very active. Alrighty, so that's kind of the precipitation and what we're expecting there, at least an overall viewing of that. What about temperatures? So again, right now, a lot of red on our map, very above average temperatures compared to what we normally see this time of year. Uh, and that will continue into this weekend before this weekend's cold front moves on through. And you'll notice, uh, not breaking the piggy bank here in terms of cold temperatures, but definitely back to average to slightly below average temperatures in the East Coast. Uh, but things really change going into next week. So again, that red returns early next week in front of that storm system, but behind it, look at this blue really working into the country, and uh, this is going into our Thanksgiving afternoon and evening, uh, bl uh, below average to well below average temperatures for just about everyone in the East Coast after that front finally clears on through and brings in that drier air mass and that colder air mass going into Thanksgiving Day and Thanksgiving weekend. And again, maybe even a bigger dump of cold air behind that with a secondary trough going into the weekend after Thanksgiving. So uh, again, definitely feeling confident on these below average temperatures and the Climate Prediction Center agrees with that. A very high probability of uh, below average temperatures for what you expect this time of year going into that um, Thanksgiving day and into Thanksgiving weekend. Again, uh, lots of blue here on the East Coast. So feeling very confident in that part of the forecast. Now, one part of the forecast that we're maybe a little less confident on, but we'll definitely touch on here, is the snowfall forecast. So, again, this is a, a kind of where I think we have the best shot of seeing some snow that accumulates. Definitely the interior northeast is one place I would mention. Uh, and then kind of the usual lake effect suspects uh, that we kind of see this time of year near Erie, Pennsylvania, up towards Buffalo, New York. Uh, kind of the western shores of Michigan there, up into the UP of Michigan. And, uh, you know, just any other places that normally see that lake effect snow, likely to see it going into Thanksgiving after the storm system clears on through. And again, some of us could even see a big thumping of snow and ice on the front end uh, going into that Wednesday time frame into the interior northeast. Outside of there, we have a lot more question marks. I think uh, the higher terrains of the Appalachians, we could see some northwest flow right now. Doesn't look like a super high probability, but definitely uh, higher than a 0% chance. So definitely worth mentioning. Uh, so again, as we get closer and we get into more of the mesoscale model range, we'll be able to take a little bit more of an in-depth look at snow totals. But just want to mention for now, um, that definitely is a shot at seeing some accumulating snow for lots of folks. All right, so that's the snow, that's the cold, that's the storm system as a whole. What about the other half of this, the severe weather? That is another thing that we are very, um, you know, prone to seeing this time of year with big storm systems with lots of wind energy. And our latest GFS model, looking at the ingredients for supercells here, you'll notice uh, going into Sunday and Monday of next week, we definitely have some places that have a shot. So I think Sunday afternoon and evening, kind of the Red River Valley of Oklahoma, Texas, kind of in between Oklahoma City and Dallas, could see some strong storms rolling on through. Uh, that does include kind of all hazards on the table at this point. And going into Monday afternoon, another flare-up of that kind of down here through uh, western Tennessee, Mississippi, 
uh, into Louisiana, into the Gulf area of uh, Texas, and potentially even Alabama has a chance on Monday afternoon for some strong to severe storms. Before Tuesday afternoon, that threat shifts off potentially into the Carolinas. Georgia could maybe see some strong storms roll on through as well uh, before that threat dies down going into Wednesday afternoon and into Thanksgiving Day itself. Uh, now, again, a lot of questions with this part of the forecast as well, as we really need to kind of watch to see who's going to get that instability to overlap with that very strong wind energy. And those are going to be the folks that really have to watch out for some very potent storms early next week. Uh, Storm Prediction Center, though, definitely agrees with the thought of uh, some severe weather starting on Sunday. Again, we already have an area to watch out for here, again, into kind of central Oklahoma and into the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area. And going into Monday, that threat shifts on down towards Baton Rouge, Jackson, Mississippi, uh, into southwestern Alabama, also the chance of some severe weather. And again, as we get closer, these maps will expand, they'll become more in-depth, and we'll have a better idea of what we are overall expecting. Alrighty, so uh, that's all I've got for you today. Again, a lot to track here, including the potential for uh, some snow, some ice, some severe weather, uh, a big time cool down, and maybe even more of that after Thanksgiving going into the start of December. So a very active pattern ahead, and I'll definitely try my best to keep you updated as we get into this very active time. Again, though, thank you for joining me today, and have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all next time.